This is the heart of your system, the hydraulic power unit. You probably use the more familiar term and call it the Kumi unit. Whatever you call it, you know it makes your whole BOP system tick. The Kumi unit, in conjunction with the accumulators, provides the hydraulic power to operate your BOP stack. Keep in mind that we're identifying the main components to a common system on Sedco 4X rigs. Your rig may have a slightly different system, but in general, you'll find most of the parts you see here in any system. This system you're about to view employs the NL Schaefer version of the Kumi unit. Almost the entire fleet uses this unit. The unit manufactured by Kumi Incorporated is similar and we'll point out one of the main differences. The next few programs in the subsea maintenance and repair series will familiarize you with the Kumi unit and its related equipment. Our intent is to refresh your memory, to give you a system overview before going on to more detailed repair programs later in the series. After viewing these programs on the Kumi unit, you'll be able to identify and maintain every component related to the Kumi unit. This first program is identification. We'll walk you through the system and familiarize you with every component. The later programs detail maintenance and system operation. We'll tackle this program in two main parts, the Kumi unit and its manual control system, and the remote control system. Let's begin right at the heart, the Kumi unit itself. There are really several systems within the Kumi unit. We'll identify these systems one at a time. The fluid reservoir and mixing system, the hydraulic pumping unit, the accumulators, and the hydraulic control manifold. The fluid reservoir, or tank, is divided into two separate compartments. The smaller tank holds the fluid concentrate, NL100, Aerophon, Quintilubric, or whatever your rig uses. The largest compartment is the mixed fluid reservoir, where the concentrate and water mix before going to the pumps. On some rigs, there's a third compartment for ethylene glycol, antifreeze protection for cold weather drilling operations. The whole thing is controlled by the mixing system. On the side of the mixed compartment, there are two fluid level control switches. Inside the tank, they're attached to the upper float and lower float. The upper float and switch serve as the automatic level controls that start and stop the mix system. The lower float and switch serve as a low level alarm system. In addition, each compartment has a sight glass for visual checks of the fluid levels. All mixing systems contain those basics. In an automatic mixing system, there are more components above the tank. The concentrate and water are pipe mixed before being dumped into the mixed fluid compartment. The mixing system has many integral parts. Potable water inlet, a Y-type strainer for filtering your pot water, a gate valve. When closed, it allows you to isolate the mixing system for repair work a water pressure regulator, an air control valve which routes rig air to necessary functions in the mixing system, the regulator control valve which allows pot water to pass into the mix piping, the water rate valve which adjusts the flow rate, water flow rate indicator, and the barrel pump. This pumps out the concentrate to be mixed. A second barrel pump may add glycol as well. Once the fluid leaves the reservoir and mixing system, it carries on to our second system within the system, the hydraulic pump unit. As we speak of the pump unit, we mean the entire pumping system with its valves, filters, motors, and hydraulic pumps. The electric motor and triplex hydraulic pump. The motor drives the pump by a chain drive. The pump, or pumps if your rig has two, charges the accumulators to system operating pressure Fluid passes to the suction side of the triplex pump from the mixed fluid reservoir through a shutoff valve and suction strainer. On the discharge side, this check valve keeps the accumulator pressure from backing up into the pumps. This motor control box determines how the electric motor is controlled. The hydroelectric automatic pressure switch is capable of operating the motor automatically by sensing system pressure. 
The air-operated hydraulic pump is the backup to the triplex pump. In the hydraulic line, there's a strainer upstream of the pump and a check valve at the pump outlet. Rig air operates the pump here at the air inlet. Upstream, there's an air filter or air lubricator and pressure gauge. The hydro air pressure switch operates the pump automatically, but this bypass valve allows you to operate the pump manually. Then there are the high pressure filters, the 10 and 40 micron filter assemblies. Two 40 micron filters are on the discharge side of the triplex pump. Each has a shutoff valve upstream and downstream to isolate for cleaning or replacing. The 10 micron filter is in the supply line to the pilot accumulators. The accumulator system. Most systems have a dual header type assembly. That's two banks of accumulators that can be isolated from each other. Each header has at least an accumulator shutoff valve and an accumulator bleed off valve. Some headers may also have a separate pressure gauge and pop off valve. Then there's a shutoff valve that allows you to isolate one bank for servicing while maintaining system pressure with the other. Two additional bottles are provided separate of the main system bottles to supply pilot pressure. They are isolated from the main accumulators by this check valve. And the fourth system within a system is made up of the many components in the control manifold. The four-way valves. One sends main hydraulic power to the BOP stack and the rest direct pilot fluid to valves in the sub pods that control the BOP components or straight through directly to the function. They're operated by these two-position and three-position air cylinders. This large one-inch valve serves as the pod selector valve. This flow meter measures the flow of all hydraulic fluid going subsea through the manifold. AKRs, like these, control the pressures that operate the manifold, annular, and fail-safe regulators in the subsea pods. And a fourth AKR may directly control the pressure going to the ball joint. For a detailed discussion of all the Kumi regulators, watch the series of programs beginning with SED 117.04X, Introduction to the Kumi Regulators. The three-way selector valves are installed on the manifold directly below the pressure gauges. These valves determine the location from which the AKR pressures can be regulated. The pressure gauge assembly on the manifold includes 10 4-inch pressure gauges. They read everything from line and accumulator pressure to ball joint and air pressure. The two RBQ junction boxes are mounted on top of the control manifold. One connects to the yellow side of the system, the other to the blue. Junction box number one is on the left side of the Kumi unit. It contains the hydraulically operated pressure switches and pressure transducers. The pressure switches are responsible for turning the indicator lights on the remote panels on and off. The transducers transform the appropriate hydraulic or air signals into electrical signals that drive the pressure readout meters on the driller's panel. Junction box number two is located on the right-hand side. It contains the solenoid-operated air valves that allow for remote operation of the air cylinders and pod selector valve on the control manifold. Junction box number three is located right behind number two. It contains the increase-decrease solenoid valves. The air filter and moisture separator. These are in the rig airline upstream of junction box number two. That's most everything on the Kumi unit from the mix tank to the control manifold. You've seen all the manual control functions to the BOP. Our second major system is the remote control electrical system. Recall we just said that box number two contains the solenoid operated air valves. These solenoids get their electrical signal from the driller's control panel and the mini remote panel. The driller's control panel is the primary operating system for BOP control. It's located on the rig floor right next to the driller station. The main section of the panel contains the combination of push buttons and indicating lights for control of the BOP stack and LMRP. 
These all reflect functions that can be manually operated directly at the control manifold on the Kumi unit. Immediately to the right of the function push buttons is the warning panel. Each light indicates low level on each of the four indicated functions. There are the increase-decrease push button stations. When the unit remote panel selector switches on the control manifold are in remote, the AKRs can be regulated from here. Adjacent to each regulator station are the pressure meters associated with the regulators, one for pilot pressure and one for readback pressure. Three systems pressure meters tell the driller the pilot, accumulator, and rig air pressure levels. The flow meter indicates the amount of fluid that's been used after operating a function. Then there's a diverter control section. This allows for remote operation of the diverter equipment. The functions and meters are self-explanatory. The mini remote panel is usually located in the tool pusher's office. Its primary purpose is to enable emergency operation of the BOP equipment if the driller's panel should ever become disabled. It contains the same type functions as the driller's panel without any meters or gauges. The remote control system wouldn't operate, of course, without its not too complicated electrical system, and it all begins here, the power pack. The unit can convert 115 or 220 volts rig AC power to 120 volt DC for use by the remote control system solenoid valves and push button indicator lights. The unit has two basic components, the battery bank and the battery charger. The lead acid batteries are in a lead line box. There are 10 of them wired in series. If a rig power failure should ever occur, the batteries are designed to operate the remote control system for about 12 hours. They're charged by the battery charger. On the charger panel, meters and indicator lights tell you all you need to know about system operation. The AC power on light tells you the system is receiving rig AC voltage. The DC low voltage light warns you if the battery pack is outputting too low a DC voltage. The meters read your output voltage and output amperage. Well, that's the end of the tour. You've seen a typical system from top to bottom. Almost every system is different, but these differences are minor. Usually it amounts to the number or types of filters, strainers, and such. Even though your system is a bit different than what you've just seen, you should be able to identify everything in your system with no problem at all.